Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us dealing with a loved one with memory loss. Today's episode is the second part of a three-part series on helping our seniors and loved ones age in place comfortably and safely. If you didn't listen to the first part on decluttering, you might want to go back and listen to that one first, then come back and check out this episode. Seniors want to age in place, a completely understandable desire which makes it vitally important to do what we can to make their home safe and enjoyable. Falls hospitalize seniors every day and sometimes they cause injuries that make life a lot harder. How many times has someone told us about a loved one that broke a hip and never truly or fully recovered? Sometimes a fall is just the beginning of many other issues all of which we should try to avoid at all costs. To maximize safety at home, we must make sure a long list of conditions are met in each room. You need to minimize clutter, which was the topic of last week's episode, optimize lighting, use safe furniture, ensure you have a reliable monitoring and alert system in place, and make it easy for them to get help fast if they need it. If that list doesn't tire you out, keep listening. To help you get started, I've included a link to a great checklist on my show notes. It's a courtesy of A Place for Mom, whose website has tons of great information. Doing as many modifications as possible before they are needed is like baby-proofing your home before the baby is mobile. I didn't do this until my daughter started crawling, and literally it was a race to keep her out of harm's way. I ended up baby-proofing on the run. You don't want to wait till there's an issue to tackle getting their home fixed. Doing things in advance will give everyone peace of mind. It also spreads out the work and the cost. I strongly encourage you to start tackling this list now before you have any emergency situations. It's important to have the home evaluated for safety and accessibility. An expert will be able to make suggestions we weren't even aware were needed. You can contact an occupational therapist, a physical therapist, a geriatric care manager, or other certified aging in place specialist. You can also check out the Department of Veteran Affairs tip sheet online. I've put their link in the show notes and added it to our website's resources page. By making positive alterations to our loved one's home environment, we can adjust for age-related declines in function and make the home safer and more enjoyable as they age. To make sure their home is comfortable and safe, consider the following. The major modifications. Zero threshold entryways. Wider doorways and halls. Offset door hinges, which make room for wheelchairs or two people walking side by side. Light switches that can be reached from a wheelchair or bed. A stair climber. A frameless walk-in shower with a sloped floor instead of a step over threshold. A raised toilet seat. Grab bars around the toilet and in the shower, raising the height of appliances, adding pull-down shelves in the kitchen cabinets, and moving laundry facilities to the main floor. Simple fixes. Changing flooring to prevent tripping hazards. Throw rugs are especially dangerous, so in places where they are needed, consider using carpet tape to make sure they stay snug to the floor. Although, I have read that this isn't a good solution either, so this is something you'll have to evaluate personally and keep reevaluating frequently so they don't become a tripping hazard. Remove wheels on chairs. I can tell you I've got a stool in my studio and people slide across the floor even though it's carpeted. So wheeled chairs, definitely dangerous. Changing all the doorknobs to easy to use handles. A D-ring shape is what I'm seeing recommended But have your partner or parent try them out before you go to the expense and trouble to change them all out. Adding more lighting. As we age, dim lighting makes it very hard to perform everyday tasks and a lack of contrast can make memory-related confusion worse. We don't need that. Put non-skid treads on stairs and keep the stairs clear of clutter. Okay. Keep, the, keep on moving here. Apply non-slip wax to floors or buy a non-slip coating product for tile, 
I've got slippery tiles in my bathroom, and I can tell you, I need to check into that. Repair any loose carpeting or raised areas of flooring. Carpeting receives a huge amount of wear and tear and can become uneven in areas, maybe even torn. Small tears can be fixed with some carpet staples or high-quality glue. If the flooring is uneven, you may have to call in a contractor to do a proper repair. Remember, the whole point is to keep it safe and we don't need them tripping over the rug. Move small and low furniture. Trying to use them can cause falls. I'm sure many of you have probably tried to get into a low chair or out of a deep couch and just struggled. So add to that memory issues and other physical issues and you can understand why any of this type of furniture would be a struggle for our loved ones. Clear electric cords and clutter. This should be a no-brainer. Add a hall railing. This can be done attractively with wide molding. That's what they have at Mom's Community, and both wheelchair-bound residents and residents with walkers use it quite well. And you wouldn't even know that it's actually... It, it's just, You would think it's decorative. It's actually useful decoration, so keep that in mind. Swap out the recliner for one that raises and lowers automatically to make getting up easier. My dad had one that was electric, but it only did the reclining function. He loved that chair to death. I have seen chairs, recliners that help people stand up on their own, and while they're not super attractive, they're definitely worth the investment. Getting chairs that have an armrest make getting up and down much easier. If you've ever had knee issues like me, you know this is true regardless of age. If wandering is a worry, add monitors and sensor alarms. This is definitely for your peace of mind. It's something your loved ones will probably argue with you about, but stand firm because you don't want to be constantly stressed about their safety. This is only a partial list of the items that need to be taken into consideration, which is why I'm strongly recommending getting started as soon as possible. Tackling all these issues at once would be exhausting and costly and would probably also exasperate any memory issues your loved one has. So do yourself a favor, start the decluttering as soon as possible, and once you get a few spots cleaned up and cleaned out, start working on this list also. You will not be sorry that you've gone through the trouble. Consult a certified aging in place specialist. They're a contractor who has undergone special training to help homeowners make age-related home modifications. They're a little challenging to find, but it's worth searching. They're becoming more and more common as our population ages. Any good contractor should be able to help you, though, if you can't find a certified agent in place specialist. A good contractor should be able to help create a list of items in order of priority And a really good one should be able to guide you in what you can tackle yourself and what is better for a professional to handle. Safety is always our primary concern. Here are some things to think about before looking for a specialized contractor, and hopefully this list will be useful if you can't find an agent in place specialist. Do I want to add a bathroom and possibly a bedroom to the main level? Main floor master bedrooms are a huge plus and even help with resale value of the home. That's according to my realtor hubby, who will be helping us with part three of this podcast series. How can I make my kitchen more functional and safe? Keep in mind that kitchens can be costly, so doing only what is absolutely necessary and staying out of the frills is important unless you have unlimited funds and time. And who of us has that? Am I worried about preventing falls? The answer to this question is always yes. Falls can happen easily even if you don't have cognitive or physical issues and as we age, falls are a huge source of problems. How much money should I budget for this project? Whatever they tell you, double it because we've all heard contractor horror stories or seen them on HGTV. Will I need to get a home equity loan? Most likely, unfortunately. Will other members of my family benefit from modifications? This is an interesting question because not all age-in-place modifications 
will be a plus to others or resale value. When my parents had to fix some dry rot in their bathrooms, my mom took out the tub and installed a beautiful shower. Not a big deal for most potential home buyers, but their house is across the street from an elementary school. And if you're a parent, you know that there are times the only way to get the kid clean is to soak them in the tub. It's possible that to get the full value out of their home, when we do go to sell, we'll have to re remodel the front bathroom and put a tub back in. That's kind of major, but there are modifications that you can do that aren't as permanent. This is where talking to experts is your best course of action. Will remodeling increase the energy efficiency of my home? The answer to this depends on what modifications you make. Making energy efficient modifications is probably a good idea if your initial list of needed changes isn't too long or too costly. Doing as many modifications as possible before they are needed is like baby proofing your home before the baby is mobile. I said that already, didn't I? Hmm. Guess I better pay attention to my notes. Now that I've probably worn you out with just the overwhelming thoughts on this subject, let's try and tackle things one room at a time. Start with the room with the most hazards and the one they spend the most time in. Don't worry about taking notes. All of these tips are on the show notes on our website. Bathroom safety. 69% of all falls occur in the bathroom. That's a pretty horrifying statistic, if you ask me. Thankfully, of all the falls my dad took, none were in the bathroom. Bathrooms are frequently tiled, have other slippery surfaces. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare waiting to happen when you stop and evaluate it from the perspective of an aging senior. Add in water, steam, and some condensation that accumulates, and you have the perfect storm for, of hazardous surfaces just waiting to cause a fall. So what can we do? I'd say it's an easy solution, but the only thing easy about that is talking about how to fix the bathroom, but here's a place to start. Add grab bars near and in the shower, around the tub, and around the toilet. These bars provide support to balance challenge seniors, especially when stepping in and out of the shower. They also provide something safe to grab onto if they slip. Make sure that bath mats are not a slipping hazard. I bought one for mom's new bathroom, but I don't think it gets used. I'll have to ask what they do after her shower because stepping out on a cold floor is terrible, but so is falling and smacking your head on the toilet. It's a wise idea to observe balance and mobility issues and ask if any normal, everyday items are presenting an issue. If you can't get a trustworthy answer, you may be forced to do a little undercover surveillance to make sure your loved one is safe. I can only imagine the nightmare of having a wet, naked loved one fall and require medical assistance. If you're not there to help, their dignity can also take a huge bruising and perhaps cause fear going forward. It's a challenge to balance their safety and their independence. Bathtubs were great when we had the dirty kids to soak, but they're quite a hazard to get into and out of as we age. As I mentioned, mom remodeled her bathroom and took out the tub and installed a huge shower. The threshold is pretty low, so it was good option at the time. If you can't remove a tub, a simpler fix is a tub transfer bench or a small step as a way to increase the accessibility to the tub. My tub is quite challenging to get in and out of, and it would be completely impossible for anyone with balance issues. The tub transfer benches aren't too attractive. Here's an opportunity for budding designers, but I'd consider one for my tub since it's hard not to use the faucet as a grab bar when getting out. Because my mom and dad's home was built in 1970, the vanities are lower than is standard today, and while they never seem to be an issue, I can understand how a taller one would be more comfortable. My home has taller vanities, so shorter ones seem really odd to me at this point, and I'm only 5'2". Unfortunately, raising the height of built-in vanities is likely cost prohibitive, but perhaps a half bath or powder room with a freestanding vanity could be modified on a budget. Changing out a vanity shouldn't be too challenging, so enlist an able-bodied family member or friend to make that happen. Not having to bend so far over to wash, brush teeth, or shave will make aging in place more comfortable, especially for taller people. 
Invest in easily installed sink, tub, and shower anti-scalding devices that recognize when the water is too hot and stops the flow. It's my understanding that these devices aren't too expensive. Another option is to adjust the thermostat of your water heater so it stays at or below 120 degrees. Okay, so maybe making the bathroom safer isn't too hard. Hopefully that's the case for you. Let's move on to the kitchen, another truly hazardous place for seniors, especially for those with memory issues. The kitchen is the third most common place for falls. Since kitchens have some of the hardest floor surfaces, it can be one of the worst places to fall. Kitchens are also an area with a lot of safety issues. My personal kitchen has a gas range, and it's really easy to ignite the burners just by leaning against it. <laughs> you wouldn't think this would really be something somebody would do, but you'd be surprised how often conversation happens in the kitchen and someone leans against the stove and starts up the flames. The only way to fix that would be to replace the entire range with a different one that didn't have front mounted knobs, but that causes another problem, reaching across a hot stove to turn off the burners. It all gets complicated quickly. This is where expert advice and personal observation are extremely important. Knowing what is a true hazard and what is less of a hazard is important. Always reevaluate as your loved one ages or their memory becomes worse. My parents' house had an electric range with side mounted knobs, so it was fairly safe, just old and not super functional. Their kitchen also didn't have a lot of upper cabinets, mostly ones that held drinking glasses, and was fairly easy to reach, so modifying upper cabinets isn't something we had to do, which is good because I wasn't even aware of that until I started doing more research for this episode. I did come across the suggestion of pull-down shelves for upper cabinets. I'm sure that modification isn't cheap. Pull-out drawers for lower cabinets is something you could do yourself. There are many varieties of pull-out drawers and racks available at most hardware and other home stores. I have a couple of pull-out shelves in my own home kitchen, and they're great. Consider this addition to your own kitchen before you even have aging issues. You'll wonder why you lived without them. Pull-out shelves in the refrigerator is also helpful. Items that give shoved to the back of get forgotten, and then you have a stinky mess to clean out. <laughs> this was a common issue with my parents' fridge even when I was a kid at home. I believe there are also pull-out shelf additions you can buy for the fridge. If not, a Lazy Susan would also be useful. A great store to check out for all kinds of home organized eyes home organizing items, easy for me to say, is the Container Store. Hopefully, there is one near you. If not, there's also online ordering. As my mom's memory got worse, Dad labeled all the shelves for what they were supposed to have on them and what was really good at... Pardon me. As my mom's memory got worse, Dad labeled the shelves for what they were supposed to have on them and was really good at labeling the food items that were stored in the fridge. These are the types of helpful ideas that make aging in place, especially with a loved one with memory loss, at least a little bit easier. Eventually, I think mom just stopped reading the labels though. If possible, make sure appliances are at eye level, like the microwave and oven. A good toaster oven on the countertop can easily replace a wall oven that is too low. I don't have mobility issues, but at 5'2", reaching across the open oven door which is just above waist level, can be a challenge for me, so I can imagine the struggle if I had mobility or balance issues. If I ever have the money, I'd replace the ovens with ones that have doors that swing open to one side. I rarely use the bottom oven, but I can see how it would be an issue as well. What I do use almost daily is my countertop convection toaster oven. It has more functions than my wall ovens and is just the right size now that it's just two humans to cook for. Speaking of ovens, consider replacing fabric pot holders with better gripping silicone versions. Another option is to install wall hooks at shoulder height to hold all of your larger pots and pans. Another super simple solution, one you may want to consider while you tackle other safety issues, is to reorganize cabinets to put the most frequently used items within easy reach. It's also important to avoid putting potentially dangerous items 
in places that are hard to see or reach. Take a spin around the kitchen with balance and mobility issues in mind. Maybe spin around several times and then you'll have a little bit of balance issues. I'm sure you'll find there are a lot of things that need to be modified for better living. Keep in mind that many seniors suffer from a poor diet because cooking become, can become too challenging. The last bit of advice for the kitchen is to keep the counters as free of clutter as possible. By improving our storage and organization options at home and in the kitchen, we can reduce clutter and limit the likelihood of creating a hazard. This can go a surprisingly long way in making the kitchen a much safer room. And I know the kitchen counters where everything gets dropped, regardless of how organized you are, start working on it in your house and maybe you can transfer the new improved habits to your parents. Okay, up next is bedroom safety. While bedrooms may seem like a safer place than most, keep in mind that this is where people change clothes and go from lying to standing, often too quickly, both of which can challenge balance and lead to the occurrence of falls. Bedrooms come in second only to the bathroom when it comes to the frequency of falls. I bet you that was a surprise to you like it was to me. If you have floor or throw rugs, consider removing them. While they do look nice and they help keep bare feet warm, they do create a tripping hazard. It's strongly encouraged everywhere I've researched to remove all throw rugs and floor rugs throughout the home. Luckily for me, my parents' home had either wall-to-wall -wall carpet or laminate hardwood. No hazardous throw rugs anywhere. They didn't have them earlier in their lives. Excuse me. They did have them earlier in their lives, but I don't recall when they were removed or what prompted their removal. This makes me realize that I should have been more aware of their safety earlier on. Ensure proper bed height. If your feet cannot comfortably touch the floor while you're seated on the bed, then the bed is too high. Trust me, it's difficult to climb into and out of bed if you have a tall bed and any injury. I had a broken collarbone two years ago and I had to use a step stool to get into and out of my bed. A quick funny side note, my oldest dog also learned to use the step stool to get onto the bed at the same time. He has a bad hip. Now I have to help him on the bed more days than not. Getting old sucks even for our canine friends. With the vast number of electrical appliances in the typical household, we tend to have an abundance of electrical cords running around the various rooms of our house. This tends to be worse in bedrooms where we keep phones, mobile phone chargers, laptop chargers, etc., etc. The list goes on and on. These cords can pose a serious tripping hazard if left uncovered or out in the open. They can also, in some instances, pose a fire risk. At least decluttering and managing electrical cords and chargers is a pretty simple fix. Okay, take a breath, moving on. Make sure there's enough light. While this tip can be applied to the entire house, it requires specific emphasis in the bedroom and the hallways. Bedrooms are traditionally one of the darkest rooms in the home. Who can sleep when it's light, right? Poor lighting can hide tripping hazards and make it quite difficult to see objects and gauge depth. This can be greatly improved by using brighter bulbs, larger lamps, and even automatic, automated night lights. We installed snap power outlets all over our house. They are traditional electrical outlets that have small LED lights along the bottom that come on when it's dark. We added one to our bathroom when I had the broken collarbone, because <laughs> dogs are a huge tripping hazard in my home. The only issue I have with the bathroom one is that it reflects off the mirror, making it a bit too bright for proper sleep, unless we mostly close the door. They have newer versions that are dimmable, so I need to check into replacing that one with a new version. In the hallways, they're great and quite attractive to look at. The best thing about them is they don't take up an outlet and you don't have to worry about changing batteries like you do with a more old-fashioned nightlight. They're inexpensive and super easy to install. That brings us to living room safety. Making simple changes to the living or family rooms, we can greatly reduce the possibility of a fall. Our biggest challenge to both of these rooms in my parents' home was the step down into each room. 
The step from the living room to the hall is where my dad had the majority of his falls when he was on hospice. He even hit his head on the step once, leaving a big gash on his forehead. He rejected the help of the caregivers, so if we had had time, it would have been wise to see about fixing that issue for him. Now, my husband, who, like I said, we'll be hearing from next week, has a great analogy on how steps like this could possibly be fixed. If you've ever been to the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California, then it's likely if you've experienced the strange stairs that have super short rises. Mrs. Winchester had rheumatoid arthritis, so she had her stairs modified so that the step up was less than four inches high. This allowed her to go up and down the stairs more easily because she didn't have to lift her feet very much. Widening the base of the step and lowering how high each step up is makes it much easier to navigate. I'm not sure how we would have fixed it for use with a walker or a wheelchair, which is why getting professional advice is crucial. The living room in my parents' house may have accommodated a small ramp, but I honestly don't know if that would have been possible. I do know both my parents would have hated it, which is another challenge that has to be tackled if your loved one wants to stay in their home. I can't advocate any strongly, more strongly, about the importance of having a specialist come in and make the determination on what is needed and what can and cannot be done to make things more accessible. Getting outside advice may also help our seniors understand the importance of these necessary renovations. If we, as their kids, try to convince them how important they are, well, phew, might just end up in a frustrating round and round argument until something unfortunate happens. And that's the whole point of this episode is to make safety our first priority and prevent as many problems as possible as they age. Another issue to consider is, is there enough room to move around comfortably and safely? My parents' living room had way too much furniture in it, which is something that is common with older people's homes. By changing the layout of the furniture, we can greatly increase the ease of access to the entire room. With easy access to seating, you greatly reduce the risk of falls. Remember, when our kids were little and we recommended that we get rid of glass tables and anything with sharp corners? <laughs> well, it's time to consider that again and for the same reasons. I remember the ugly corner pads that some parents added for a short time while their babies learned to walk steadily. I always thought they were totally ugly, but they're a good option if your loved one refuses to part with any potentially hazardous furniture. They may have to decide on ugly corner pads or replacement, and I wouldn't hesitate to make sure they understand these are their only options, unless, of course, you come up with a better one. Another thing to consider is the stability of the furniture. You don't want any wobbly tables because of the nasty fall potential with stuff falling on top of your family. Unstable furniture has the potential to tip over and break with very little notice, which can lead to a very bad fall and injury. Are you tired of hearing about falls? Okay, we're in the home stretch. Home security and monitoring. Most seniors live in homes that were constructed decades ago. There's nothing wrong with that. It's especially good if their home is completely paid for. However, there are some downsides to living in an older home. Older homes do not have the updated safety features of newer constructed homes. This is especially true when it comes to home security. While seniors are not targeted more than the general population when it comes to petty crime, theft, and home invasion, if they are targeted, they can do very little to stop it. Fortunately, there are a number of things we can do to increase the safety of our homes, protecting ourselves or our elderly relatives from the likelihood of an incident occurring in the first place. By ensuring that the following recommendations are managed, we can maximize the safety of the home, vastly improving security and safety. Install deadbolt locks on all exterior house doors to ensure that they cannot be easily broken into. While you're at it, you might want to install slide locks up high to prevent wandering seniors from escaping outside and getting lost. Replace any decorative door glass with thick safety glass. This will ensure that they will not be broken or used as, a, as an access point in the case of a home invasion or theft. <clears throat> Replace any hollow or glass exterior doors with solid wood or metal ones. 
This will reduce the chance of someone physically breaking down a door to be used as an entry point. Install a peephole into your exterior front door. This will ensure you can see who is at the door, reducing the likelihood of opening a door to a stranger. A more modern option would be a doorbell camera, such as the ones offered by Ring or various other companies. We have Ring doorbells, and at first I thought my husband was nuts spending the money for these doorbells in our safe town and safe neighborhood. But once I had them, and they'd stopped working for a short period of time, I really missed them, so they are really quite handy. So consider a video doorbell camera. These cameras enable you and your loved one to see who is ringing the doorbell without even needing to be home or getting up out of a chair. These are great for checking for potentially dangerous or suspicious people when they ring your doorbell. They also record people that come up to your door or near the, the zone that you have set. So if something happens, you might have video of it. Unfortunately, these are kind of all security issues most of us need to consider nowadays. Replace windows with thick safety glass. This will greatly improve the strength of the window and reduce the risk of a break-in. Install motion sensor lighting around the home. This not only improves visibility, but also acts as a deterrent to potential criminals. Install a wireless home security system that lets you remotely manage and monitor its features. For example, in the event of a false alarm, it's ideal if you can turn it off for your loved one rather than making him or her wait for help with a blaring alarm sounding and causing stress. If you choose to add cameras to your security system, it can be helpful for monitoring your loved one for safety as long as they are fine with that. The implementation of the above tips can greatly improve the security level of home. They will not only reduce the likelihood of such an incident occurring, but will also protect the homeowner from all harm if an incident did still happen to occur. If you have a loved one that may wander, you may want to consider enrolling them in an emergency response service. Should the individual become lost, a caregiver can report the situation to an emergency response network, including the local Alzheimer's Association chapter and law enforcement agencies that will work to get the individual home safely. You may also want to consider a web-based GPS location management service to remotely monitor the person with Alzheimer's. Check with the Alzheimer's Association for more information about these services. Lastly, make sure there are working smoke and carbon monoxide detectors in the home. Also, make sure there are working fire extinguishers in the kitchen, garage, and possibly one close to the bedrooms. As you embark on creating a safer home, it's important to consider how long a person might live in the home. Keep it in mind how long the loved one may live in the home will be a useful guidepost while you decide what has to change and how to accomplish the changes. You don't want to lower the value of the home, but you also want to make it as safe as possible. Again, this is where the advice of contractors, realtors, designers, etc. are really important, and it's why starting sooner rather than later is important. Making time to get the opinions and professional help of various experts is tough. And if you have to do things in a hurry, you'll likely end up not having the time to really research the best way to go about making the home as safe and comfortable as possible. If you have time, Google making a home safer for seniors and you'll get pages of information. There's probably multiple articles on any specific home safety concern you may come across. You can also leave us a voice memo through our website if you'd like us to help you with research. I hope this episode was as helpful as it was likely mentally exhausting. I encourage you to reach out to anyone and everyone that can help. Home safety will be a critical challenge to tackle, but once you've started the process, you'll have more and more peace of mind as the to-do list gets shorter. Before you go and start making and tackling your list, Please take a moment to rate and review this podcast. When you give ratings and reviews, it gives us a warm feeling, which is always good when we're dealing with Alzheimer's. Plus, it helps more people find us, and we can't be a supportive podcast if people don't know we exist. If you have a topic you'd like to see covered, shoot us an email or leave us a voice memo through our website. We're here to be a support, so your input is helpful. 
And as always, stay strong, stay positive, and tune in next week for another helpful episode on what to do with the family home when your loved one has to move out. You'll get to hear from another family member, so that should be interesting. <laughs>